Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spooner Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton, by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church, located on North Avenue A, and by M. Bixler Video Productions, call us for more information about underwriting. Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information. Hello listeners on WBYS AM 1560 and FM 93.7 and viewers on Canton Cable Channel 22. Welcome to this Canton Mayoral Candidates Roundtable. The event is sponsored by the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee and is being video recorded in the Graham Hospital Boardroom on Thursday evening, March 30th. M. Bixler Video Productions of Canton is handling the recording. I'm Kevin Stevenson, the moderator. The chairman of the Government Affairs Committee, Nick Tinsman, is the timer. The purpose of the roundtable is to allow the three candidates more time to discuss matters of importance to voters than time permitted at the March 23rd Meet the Candidates event at the Donaldson Center at Wallace Park. We've invited the Canton Daily Ledger, the Fulton Democrat, and WBYS to serve as the panel of questioners. Representing the Ledger is Deb Robinson. From the Democrat, it's John Froling. And Don Tharp is here from WBYS. You may hear some of the same questions that were used at Meet the Candidates, plus new questions the media put together on their own. Here's how the round table, a round table will be conducted. The questions from the media will be asked in a random order. After each question is asked, the candidates will have up to one minute to respond. They'll go in ballot order for the first question, Jeff Fritz, followed by Kent McDowell, then Lisa Farenbrook. For the second question, Kent will go first, followed by Lisa, then Jeff. For the third quest question, Lisa will go first, followed by Jeff, then Kent. That rotation will continue for all questions. After each candidate has made an up to one minute response, we'll allow them the opportunity to discuss the question amongst themselves in a true roundtable fashion. The discussion portion will not be timed, but the moderator reserves the right to keep the speaking time amongst the three candidates as even as possible by stepping in and allowing the other candidates to speak if they so choose. Our intent is not to hamper the discussion. It's merely to keep it fair. Also, no personal attacks will be allowed. If they do occur, the moderator will intervene. Before we get started, here are the three candidates. Jeff Fritz, Kent McDowell, and Lisa Farenbrook. We welcome the media members and the candidates and thank each of them for their participation. So let's get underway. Deb Robinson of the Daily Ledger, your first question please. Thank you, Kevin. Candidates typically use buzzwords to help grab the attention of voters, but saying and doing are two entirely different concepts. Election pros won't help citizens if they are simply empty promises. What do each of you really bring to the city and citizens if elected mayor? Jeff Fritz. Thank you. When I first ran uh, four years ago, I did use a buzz uh, phrase or buzzword, uh, serve. Um, and I start out with sound fiscal management, um, expanding economic growth, recruiting the best team, vision for the future, and enhancing quality of life. Uh, I think there's several things that I brought with that, um, as we've seen through the last four years. Just a few selected uh, accomplishments being over $16 million in economic growth. I did restructure um, for f uh, fiscal operations within City Hall. Um, downsizing our administrative staff. Uh, going forward, I am using the forward slogan, or forward uh, for uh, going forward with um, fiscal sustainability, open government, uh, 
restructuring operations, we're going to continue with that, working with local businesses, attracting new industries, and um, revitalizing neighborhoods, delivering quality services. And what I'm going to bring is the next section is continuing to build on what I've done so far and uh, continuing to enhance the uh, quality of life in Canton. Kent McDowell. Thanks, Kevin. <clears throat> well, the, I think the biggest thing I bring to the, the table uh, to the citizens is uh, an endless bound of energy. Um, I'll be a full-time mayor, um, even though it's a part-time position on paper. But I'll be a leader. I'll be here. Um, I'll be in the forefront working with uh, uh, economic groups, with the county, with the school board with the college. Uh, I think that's what we need is a, a huge partnership. I think there's been uh, a lack of that in the last uh, few years. And I, I've i been a, a union negotiator. Um, I've been a, a mediator, you know, on uh, with the police department, working third shift, you know, getting through difficult situations. So I can think on my feet. And uh, again, like I said, I, I'm a very hard worker and uh, I'll be there full time for the city and for the citizens. Lisa Farenbrook. I think my buzzword was uh, a change for the right reasons and um, to expand on that um, what I meant was the right reason being that I want to be for the people and then I think there are wrong reasons for running for mayor um, and I don't have a personal agenda so it is all about the people for me. Um, listening, I'm a good listener. Um, I actually hear people. I want to give people an opportunity to participate in government. Um, I want to bring accountability and transparency back to the office. I think that's been lacking as well. And like Kent said, I'm, I'm a paramedic, so I can think fast on my feet. It's part of my job. So um, that's what I'm here is for the people. All right, we'll open the floor up for discussion amongst the three candidates. And if you'd like to have the question repeated, Deb, feel free to do so. Or are the questions, the candidates all right? I'm, I'm okay. I'm ready to respond. If, uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with, uh, you know, Kent brings up the thing about being a full-time mayor, although it's part-time on paper. Um, and being in the position and doing it for four years, I certainly understand what he's saying. I started out uh, when I assumed the mayor's role four years ago in a full-time position. Uh, saw how much this took. I transitioned down to part-time in that position and back in uh, December 2016 I actually retired and I've been doing this full-time since 2000 since uh, the beginning of the year and that would be my intention for the next four years. So I've already set up for that. Uh, I've already experienced what it's like to be in there. Um, so that's, uh, you know, going there. He refers to partnerships um, and I agree with that too, but we already have established many partnerships. We already uh, partner with the Spoon River Partnership for Economic Development, the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce. We've got relationships with both, positive relationships. Uh, we go outside the community to um, look for spurring economic development and things. We have a um, ad hoc group that we meet, uh, ad hoc meetings we have um, with Macomb, with their mayor and their um, economic and chamber people. We meet uh, monthly, uh, one month in Canton, next month over in Macomb to share ideas because we feel that um, not only are our communities somewhat similar and can use similar type things, but we're far enough apart not to be hurting each other either with trying to come up with ideas. So with that, I'd just like to mention, um, and I know Lisa's brought this up all through her things, doing things for the people, I admire that and commend her for that. That's what we're all in here for, I hope. But talks about people running for the wrong reasons and her not having a personal agenda and she mentions us having a, an agenda type thing. And I've got to say that I think I've proven over the last four years that I am sincere, real, authentic, genuine. And if I did have an agenda, that's not the reason I'm going to be running for another four years. I mean, this is going to be putting me, I've been six years on city council. How long would somebody be hanging on to an agenda like that type of thing? My only agenda is continuing moving forward what we've done for the last four years. So thank you. Kent or Lisa, a response? Well, I, I just uh, want to say that I understand we do have partnerships. I never said that we didn't, but I don't think that they're aggressively uh, uh, and assertively maintained. 
Uh, you can have all the meetings you want, but I, I, I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to be a full-time mayor from the moment I'm elected, not wait three and a half, four years to become a full-time mayor. Um, I'll be out there, like I said, with a boundless amount of energy and, and uh, trying to get people going. I mean, it, it, you can have partnerships and still be stymied by, not, by, by lack of action. And my point is that I know people on the county board, uh, I know people on, in the partnership with uh, the economic partnership. You know, I have worked with, for example, uh, you know, Steve Bowler is in both uh, the uh, partnership and the county board. I, I've known um, Mr. Booker for a lot of years. I sat on the county board for 10 years. And, I, and, and the county, it seems like the county and, and, and the city are sometimes, you know, at odds about things and don't, uh, don't partner up enough. Um, you know, and, and as chief of police, um, I went, reached out to Sheriff Standard, and we created the very first uh, CERT or SWAT team in the county, countywide. That's never been done before. We'd always been kind of at uh, competition, but we we pulled our resources, and everybody, you know, stepped up, and uh, we trained with each other, uh, and it's working out great. It's still to this day, it's still uh, in effect. I know they've been used quite a bit. So it's things like that. You can't just sit in meetings and. You got to go out, and you got to you got to be aggressive. I mean, we we are in such competition now with other communities that uh, we have got to be aggressive. We, our mayor has to sit out there, and you know, Missy Tower can't do these things by herself. Uh, the school board and the school, the superintendent, Mr. Roth, he can't do things by himself. He's got to have a partner standing beside him. I mean, we're all in this together, and. Uh, so the, the mayor has to get out there and get active and, and uh, get after things right, right now. Uh, I'm not going to wait two or three or four years to say yeah, I'm a full-time mayor. Um, I'm going to hit the ground running. And just to answer Lisa, you know, you're right. I do have an agenda. I, I just I can't help myself. But my agenda is to make Canton better. And my agenda is to bring families here so families can stay here. My agenda is to try to find housing, to create housing, to create some uh, small industries so we can have some good jobs here. My agenda is for Canton. I just want to make Canton a better place. I've got uh, my whole life here. I, I enjoy coaching and watching these kids grow up. But the sad thing about coaching in four years, a lot of these kids never come back um, because they can't. There's nothing here for them. And that breaks your heart when you've made these strong relationships. So that, that's just one part of it. Um, but yeah, I do have an agenda. I, I want to make Canton the best, best community that we can be. And I want, it to, I want us to be competitive in, in the markets. I want us to be uh, a place where people want to come, where we can work with the, the park board and, and expound on those strengths that we have and in, in our school district and our school board, expound on those strengths that we have. That's my agenda, is Canton. Okay. Lisa? Well, I have an agenda too. I just don't have a personal agenda. Um, and when Mayor Fritz talks about partnerships and ad hocs and this and that, um, I think the problem with that is how many people watching know about these things and that's what I'm talking about is transparency and um, to me that's open government is uh, sharing with it and getting people involved and forming committees and like I said about um, small business owners and having a committee let them have a voice what what do they need from the city um, so yeah it's in a agenda I have an agenda my agenda is the people um, just not a personal agenda so um, Mayor Fritz may not have an agenda personal agenda now but I think he did four years ago and that's what I was talking about all right we'll move on to the second question Don, uh, Don Tharp WBYS with less and less money coming into local government from the state, how is, how is that going to affect the budget of the city of Canton and for the city of Canton? Kent McDowell, first response. It's it's going to affect it a lot. It's obviously, it's affected us now, and you know we can't get the the prison to pay their water bill. Um, again, you know, I am convinced that a mayor has to lead and has to go down to Springfield 
and and hook up with uh, Mr. Eunice and and uh, Mr. Kaler and say, look, you know, we can't we can't live like this. You got to pay your bills. We got to get over this uh, little cat fight you guys got going on down here. And because you're affecting a lot of people, and a lot of people are the constituents and the taxpayers, and it's it's it, it does hurt us. It's hurting everybody. But you know, these guys got to be held their feet to the fire. They got to be held accountable. They're elected officials. We need to take an aggressive stance with it and say enough's enough. Lisa? Um, I agree 100% with Kent. I mean, I think the mayor has to be um, active in all levels, uh, state level. I think there's, um, whether it's meeting with um, Yunez or Sherry Bustos or whoever it is, um, we need to use every resource that we can. And just to add on that, that um, I will be a full-time mayor as well. I'm, I won't be working at Fulton County Emergency Medical Association if I am elected. So um, we talked about before about um, having more homes built in Canton, tax rolls, that's what we need. We need more things on our tax rolls. That's the only way, that's our income. So um, we're gonna have to work hard at getting that done. And Jeff. Yes, I'm glad both of my opponents um, feel that we should be reaching out to the uh, representatives because it's exactly what we do. I've met with Mike Eunice, I've met with uh, Senator Dave Kaler, our treasurer has uh, been in contact, made a, um, made a good contact with a person down comptroller's office, the state, and we are one time close to 900,000 that we weren't, uh, that we were owed by the state on the prison water bill referring to. Uh, we got down to even, and yes, it's crept back up to about 450,000 recently, and we'll be working on that again. But uh, we've already made those contacts. We already have those relationships, and we're doing that. Um, but yes, we're going to have less money coming in from the state. The only thing that might be beneficial, it's going to help out a little bit, but it won't be um, substantial, is LGDRF, Local Governmental Distributor Funds are going to be, uh, revenue funds are going to be increasing some. It passed either the House or the Senate, I don't remember which one. Um, that went down what the uh, municipal share was decrease a few years ago when Quinn's uh, 3% uh, tax hike expired on property and uh, personal income taxes. Um, so we may be seeing a little bit of that. That's not the um, end all answer though. What we've got to do is bring in businesses and bring in jobs. We'll open the floor up for any of the candidates to discuss that question further. Well, I, I never I never said that uh, we haven't made contact with them, and I know our water bill is back down to zero again, and now it's back up to four, four plus thousand, hundred thousand dollars again. And there's no reason for that. I, we are not aggressive enough uh, uh, dealing with the state. However, I like to say too that we can't depend on the state, obviously. You know, we've lost a considerable amount of money, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in our sales tax revenue in the last year. You know, we have got to get our sales tax back up. We have got to get some uh, housing, new housing in here. We've got to get some industry and some businesses in here. You know, we're living now, this administration is living now on raising property taxes and it, it just, it's not right. I, I just, I totally disagree with that. I always have. Um, you have a people here in town that are living on fixed incomes and every year their tax, your tax bill goes up and up. And uh, this year, it's, they, they wanted to raise it 5%, and now, you know, it's the 2.5%. You know, we, we can't live like this. You know, when you're not bringing any money and you keep spending more, um, something's got to give. And I think that, you know, you get, we got to get aggressive, go out and get businesses, bring our sales tax up, get, our, get new properties in here to, to build our property tax base. Because, again, we cannot count on the state until they get done with their um, cat fight down there with each other. You know, we're going to still be in this spot 10 years from now if we don't have another budget. So that's my take on it. I think another thing we need to work on, and, you know, I agree with Ken, it, no matter who is elected, we're, we're going to have this problem. <laughs> it's, it's going to be a battle. But another thing I think we can work on is grants and work hard on getting grants in here, whether it be for infrastructure or whatever it is. Uh, we need all the help that we can get, so without putting the burden back on the citizens. 
Yeah, and, and I think grants are a good idea. Unfortunately, they're drying up. There's very few of them out there anymore. Um, we looked for them, partnerships look for them. Anything that comes about, we look for and they, that we know of and we put in for and we search for those. Uh, we've even worked with the um, Western Illinois Regional Council to help us with uh, grants and secure grants and give us um, opportunities. But again, they're drying up just like sales taxes, unfortunately, or money from the state. Um, can't you talk about raising property taxes? And yes, nobody wants to raise property taxes. We don't have to. We, you know, that's something that um, is dear and near to everybody. Nobody wants nobody wants taxes raised. But for the services that people receive, they also have to realize too what their sales tax or what their property tax bill is. You realize that only 23 percent of your property tax bill is for city service for the city. You know where the majority of it is? Almost 45% of schools. Personnel in schools? No, right? not personnel, schools. 23% okay. is city, practically 23%. 45% is schools. And the rest of it goes is county and parks, and things like that. Um, so it's a small amount. So when you're talking about we raise taxes, yes, it's happened, we've had to raise some, but it's that substantial to the overall to the bill. And I think sometimes, and I'm putting this out as an education piece, I think sometimes people feel that when we're talking that way, we're raising their whole property tax bill. It's us raising the whole tax bill. And it's not. It's a less than a quarter it's less than a quarter of their tax bill. Uh, but I do agree we have to look elsewhere for things. Um, a possibility, and again it's raising something that you have to do. Being a non home rule community, we do have the ability to up our sales tax by another half percent. That's as far as we can go under non home rule. But the thing about that is you're not just impacting residents then. You're, it's anybody who does stuff through the city. Am I saying we should do that? No, I'm saying it's an option, it's out there. I don't want to raise any tax, we don't have to. But um, again, we're not unique there. You look elsewhere, I've heard people say, why can't we be like Morton? Why can't we be like uh, East Peoria? Well, East Peoria just up their water rates more than we ever have because of issues there, so. Well, and when you up service when you talk about a sales tax, to me that's a fair tax. Um, if I don't want to buy anything, then I'm not going to pay tax. Uh, but to continue to, and I, I don't care if it's 10% or 5% of that tax money goes to can you're still raising property taxes. And, and, and I don't think that's fair. That's, that's my point. Um, as far as grant money, you say it's drying up. Uh, maybe in the state, everything's drying up. I don't know if we've aggressively researched the federal grants. And I think the question was basically about the state. But uh, I think you can, if you look at grants, I don't think the state's going to offer much there either. But you talk about water rate raises and stuff. Uh, it just all of a sudden, some of these, some of these things we saw coming with the garbage rates and the water rates, and, and it, but we just sat and did nothing with it. There was, I think, over $6 million a few years ago in that water sewer fund and the, from that bond. I mean, people complain to me constantly, we're paying more money on the bond than we are in our water. And now that, that fund's down to 900000 or less. So, you know, we're, we're stealing uh, from Peter to pay Paul, and it's, this, this can't go. I mean, you, you, we have got to go out and aggressively seek out business and, and uh, seek out uh, jobs. Uh, it was light industry to come in here for jobs. We we have to hit our tourism hard to get people in here to buy things and buy gas. We need some, we need housing. You know we need to, to uh, relieve the housing and get and get more of a tax base there. So that, that's my point about about that. Lisa, Jeff would like to respond, but if you want first response to give it. Yeah, I would. Um, I feel like Mayor Fritz was doom and gloom that the grants are drying up, but um, like I said, it's it's going to be tough for anybody, but um, we have to try. Isn't that what we're here for? So um, I don't care if it's writing a grant every day. If you get one, it's worth it. And yes, there's more work to be done, whether it be the housing or new business or whatever, uh, sales tech, whatever it is. There's more work to be done, but um, we have to continue to try. And Jeff, a final thought before we move on to the next question. Yeah, I just want to respond to Ken, and he's absolutely right about the um, water bond and stuff, but 
a lot of those things we saw coming, and a lot of that was done in the previous administration, uh, Kent. And uh, I never blame that on you, Jeff. I'm I, no, no, sure. I'm not saying that. What I'm okay. saying is that just so I make it clear, I'm no, not, no, no, I'm, I'm not, not saying you're the cause of any of that. No, no, I'm, I'm saying that that was there and continues to get taken away from it. Well, no, and my point so, was not uh, not that you're blaming me. No, I, okay. my, my point is that I think it was water rates didn't go up in 14 years, garbage rates didn't go up in 10 years. We decided we had to do something about that, unfortunately. And then you did use the bond money improperly for operation and maintenance, not what it was supposed to be intended for. And that's why it got down so far. But that's why we I had to raise I'm sorry, rate. I didn't hear what you said. The bond money was what? Used improperly. Okay. Some of it. For uh, what again? O&M, op operation okay. maintenance. But you were on the council at that time. No, right? I was, well, I was on the council for part of that time. Okay. For two years. Um, I won't say I wasn't, uh, but not over 14 years. No, I understand that. Um, but I, and I will say that, you know, unfortunately, I should say unfortunately, but we did have to raise some rates, some garbage rates, some water rates, because they're supposed to be self-sustaining, those, both those um, uh, operations. And, uh, but we made those hard decisions, took upon ourselves. And I commend the council and I, for doing that, because they, somewhere we have to start to right the ship. And uh, that's what we've done. I just want to say real quick, you know, that sometimes we're held at, you know, when you talk about uh, rates with garbage and that, you know, sometimes you can't control that. And I've heard people talk about privatization of garbage in the water, and that's the last thing I want to see happen, because then you are at the mercy. And, and I think, and I understand what Jeff's saying, and I never, I never uh, didn't want to insinuate that I, all this happened in his administration, and if I did so, I, my apology, that's not what I meant. What I meant was that this should have gradually been going up. And yet, yes, you still were, you know, you admit that it was used improperly, and that was my point, and you were on the council at the time, and some of that was happening, and these things have to stop. I mean, this, you know, we have got to learn that sometimes you do have to say, okay, you know, get uh, yelled at by, uh, you know, people for raising a little bit of water rates or garbage rates, but it's a lot better than privatization, and I guarantee it's a lot, it's a lot prettier than raising property taxes constantly. That, that was my point, Jeff. Lisa, would you like to have one final thought before we move no, on I'm to good. the next question? <laughs> <laughs> next, we'll uh, receive a question from John Froling of the Fulton Democrat. Whose question? Thanks, is it mine? Okay, I couldn't remember it. So. Oh, okay. Um, this is kind of about uh, decisions. Running for political office is not something the average citizen does. When someone decides to pick up their nominating papers and throws their hat in the ring, it's usually something that triggered that, that them to do that. You don't just wake up one morning and decide, I'm going to run for mayor. What was the trigger for you? Lisa, you're first. The trigger for me was uh, what I said before. Um, I felt like people were running for mayor for the wrong reasons, for personal agendas. And so I just really felt um, it was laid on my heart that it was something I needed to do. Um, running for political office has never been on my bucket list. And um, I just felt like I hadn't had a voice for the last four years. And I feel like my voice is important. It's as important as the next guy's. And um, I feel like there's a lot of people, I've talked to a lot of people that feel the same way, and I want to be able to give those people a voice. And uh, it's, it's certainly been a challenge, and uh, I, I don't know that I'm going to say I enjoy it. I've enjoyed it, but uh, I'm up for the challenge, and I hope I'm elected, and it was worth it. Jeff? Yes, uh, public service has been my life. I've been in public service for over 40 years. And prior to even coming to Canton, when I was up in Bloomingdale, where I was a police officer, retired from, I was um, on the police pension board there, and that was the first type of political thing I got involved in, because you're elected for that. Um, so I got involved in a little bit of a board uh, stuff there and got a taste of it. When I came to Canton as the chief of police, one of the things you have to do, as Kent well knows, as department heads, you have to attend the council meetings. And um, <coughs> that became very intriguing to me. I liked to see how things were going on behind the scenes, the operations of things, how city business was being conducted, although sometimes I got frustrated if you're all 11 o'clock at night, don't get me wrong. And once I was not 
in the um, doing that anymore. I was um, not doing the Chiefs position. I had no reason to be at those meetings anymore. I just realized I had a void. I had a void because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing stuff for the people. And I know what it's like because I've been doing it for six years now as an alderman, as a mayor. And I'm continuing to want to do it because I do enjoy the public service and being out with the community. Kent. Thanks, Kevin. I, um, again, I think I'd have to echo what Jeff said. I've been in public service all my life. Um, you know, whether in law enforcement, in education, um, you know, teaching DARE. I was the first DARE officer in Fulton County and, and I uh, really enjoyed being in a classroom again. And uh, I, I agree, you know, uh, that people people need to be heard and, and people want to know that they, they mean something. And, and uh, I just, I believe that I, you know, am that type of person that will listen to people. I, you know, I like for example, I've gone to the nursing homes, I've gone to the high rises, and I've talked to these residents there and said, listen, you have a voice. And, uh, you know, I, I will listen to you, and, um, you know, we can have monthly or semi-yearly uh, meetings, whatever you want, but you do have a voice. You are citizens of Canton. And I just don't think that all the people in, uh, in town feel like they uh, are important. And that's what I just, I want to run. Um, to continue uh, my public service. I've got some life left in me and uh, I want to give uh, people a chance to be heard. Floor is open for more discussion. Well, I'll just add that um, I've been in public service as well. I mean, we've all pretty much, I'm on the ambulance side, but uh, that, I mean, I love working with the public, but that really wasn't the reason I ran. I. I ran for the people and for the reason that I have not felt that I was given a voice for the last four years. Um, so yeah, public service has been my life as well and uh, hopefully I can uh, continue that. Well, I, I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, uh, I uh, had a lot of life left in me. I, this is something I've wanted to do for a long time. And you don't do something like this when I have a little bit of tough skin, you know, and because uh, it's sometimes it can't be, you know, it can be ugly. It, unfortunately, it has to be that way. Uh, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, it gets that way. It doesn't. It shouldn't have to be that way. But uh, you can't be faint of heart and take this on. And uh, it's it's been uh, worked hard, and it can be exhausting at times, but it also can be rewarding, you know. And I had some health challenges. A couple of years ago and uh, fought through those and um, I still have some fight in me I am a fighter I'm a survivor and a football coach and uh, I teach that to my young men and, and my family my boys and my daughter and um, I teach you know I continue to preach to them you know be a part of the solution a part of the problem and uh, so I'm leading by example of these young people that I've taught and coached and, and uh, mentored you know my entire life um, I just think it's it's your civic duty to get involved, and uh, that's one of the main reasons why I jumped into the fray. I'll just add that uh, you know both Kent and Lisa have their want and desires for wanting to do the position, and um, I'll commend them for that. I have no problem with that at all. They all have their separate reasons for wanting to do it, but the difference between us is I've been in the chair and I've done it the last four years. And that, after having that desire to do it as well, just like they do now, but I can tell you that I've been in reality and I've been there, I know what it is, and I still want to do it. They don't know if they're going to still want to do it when they get in there or not, but I know I do because I've been there, I've experienced it, and I'm going to, I want to go forward. Well, I haven't sat in a mayor's chair, but I've sat on a county board for 10 years and I've had my taste of public service and, and government, local ground, uh, grassroots government in some tough times. So I'm not walking in this thing as a novice. You know, I've, I've been around the block a couple times and, and uh, you know, we've, we've had some tough times in Fulton County and I, again, like Jeff said, as chief of police, I sat in this uh, council meeting so I've got a taste of it and uh, quite frankly, I, uh, I liked it. and. Uh, it's something that I live for. It's something that you know you can feel accomplished when something happens that's positive. You feel accomplished, and when you know something doesn't go quite that way, you know you got to take the hits too. Um, you just got to be, you know, you got to learn to to be a leader and and take those shots and know that sometimes it's not going to be pretty. But uh, you know, we need people again. It's, I think it's our civic duty as an American citizen, you know, citizen of the United States, and. Uh, 
to get involved, whether it be grassroots or anything else. You know, a lot of a lot of great women and men died for this uh, country uh, to give us this privilege, and uh, so I'm doing that too to honor them. Lisa or Jeff, before we move on to the next question, I'm good. I'll just say that uh, I, I am a novice, so <laughs> out of the out of the two, I am a novice, but I'm certainly committed, and uh, I think I'm up for the fight. Don Tharp of WBYS has the next question. Thank you. There's been some bright spots in with RP Lumber and Dunkin' Donuts, Baskin Robbins deciding to locate here in Canton. But with JC Penney's announcing that they are closing the Canton store, how will each of you work with the Spoon River, Spoon River Partnership for Economic Development to bring in more retail stores or other stores? Jeff, one minute response. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Yes, and that's, that's a very good question, and I can tell you that the day that we found out about J.C. Penney um, pulling out of Canton, I was already in communication with uh, Missy Towery, the uh, Executive Director of Spooner Partnership for Economic Development. We already were thinking of some ideas together, um, and this is going to be challenging, and there's no doubt about it, but we've got to work on it, think about it every day because of the fact that there's other communities, Bloomington, uh, Macomb, they're going to keep competing right with us to get people to fill their spaces. There's no doubt about that. What we have going for us is that we have an established partnership, we work well together, and also that the um, facility that J.C. Penney is leasing is from Cook, the CSC properties, and they're also very aggressive in looking for a tenant. We're all three working together on that right now. Thanks, Kevin. I uh, obviously, Don, you know. We should not be on the outside looking in. Um, not you know we had to sit helplessly too with and look at this thing with pennies. But you know obviously that you don't want anything like this to happen. And this rumor had been going around for a long time. And I, as mayor, I would have called pennies and say, hey, what's going on here? Is this is this true? Uh, I'm hearing this. I think I would have called the Cook Corporation who owns the building and said hey have you heard this too and uh, I think I would have tried to nip it in the bud before we got going and got this deep um, but yeah obviously as mayor you know you got to work with uh, the, the economic development and, and uh, but you also got to make phone calls too and get out there and try to try to stop these things when they're rumored um, I think actually probably all that did happen um, I think the uh, partnership, the chamber, I think they probably reached out to, uh, and the city reached out to Penny's. Um, I've known Missy a long time. Um, you probably all know uh, that I know Amanda quite well, so I'm, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I, I can work uh, hand in hand with the partnership and, and the chamber and uh, um, help come up with some some ideas. I mean, it's it's going to take work, and um, I'm certainly willing to do that. And yeah, the floor is open. Yeah, um, at least you are correct. We uh, did do some reaching out uh, when we heard about things, Kent. Um, the Partnership for Economic Development, the Chamber of uh, sorry, Kent Area Chamber of Commerce, and the city all put together a letter. A combined letter, a signed letter that was sent to corporate, uh, J.C. Penney corporate uh, offices, uh, pleading with them, uh, you know, what it would mean to our city and what it would do for us. Um, I don't know, though, if Cook did something separately. I can't say that, but I know that, um, um, they, you know, we're going to, and we're not just looking necessarily for retail space to go there. We're looking for what might make sense, but it could be retail, it could be something else, but we're looking outside the box as well. So it's not just saying, well, we got to bring in a target or because that's not going to happen, to be quite honest with you. It's, we don't meet their demographics. I know people are saying, well, let's reach out, let's get a target, let's get this, you know. But um, we are looking for things and our, I can tell you, we're open and uh, anybody has any ideas, we'll certainly take those as well. We're, we're here to listen too. I mean, sometimes you get your best information by listening and getting other people's ideas. So, Well, I, I never, you know, I never said that a letter wasn't sent or this or that. I'm just saying that I didn't know about that. And the common person on the street, I don't think knew about that either. So it was uh, all the rumor and innuendo was going around. And uh, I, th I think that this, you know, the city should have stepped up. So yeah, this is, you know, happening. And I think, you know, with the media, uh, letting them know it's happening and there's a possibility there. And then 
again, putting pressure on pennies if whatever pressure we could apply to them with phone calls and letters and whatever and say, you know, please, you know, this is going to really devastate our community. I, those are the things that I would have would have done. And, and uh, again, I didn't say that they weren't done. I'm saying that, you know, the question was, what would you do? How, how would you work it? And that's, that's how I would do it. Um, I, one interesting thing is when uh, we talked about partnering with whoever, not just the partnership, but I uh, had a meet and greet the other night and a, um, another female business owner um, came to actually meet with me and talk and she had uh, loads of information and, and wants to help in any way she can and she says, do you know any franchise owners? I'm like, well, I don't personally know any. But she wants to be involved and I think uh, having that open government and having an open line of communication with people like that is uh, going to make the difference and letting them participate. Jeff? Yeah, uh, Ken, you know, you, you make it sound like these rumors were out for weeks and months or anything else, and they were, there was stuff out in the paper, stuff came out a couple months ago um, from Penny's, they're going to close 138, 140 stores. They wouldn't tell anybody what stores, we were concerned. Um, they would not release the list of stores, and when they released them, it came out on a Actually, we found out on a Wednesday, I won't say how we found out because I don't want to give up somebody's name or anything else, the day before the list came out and uh, by Friday, or I should say, yeah, and Friday is when I got in the media. So it doesn't give you a whole lot of time, but we sent our letter before we even know who, that we were going to be closed or not um, to try and uh, circumvent that. Kent and Lisa, if you want one last uh, response I, I just, before we know, move I'm on. Sure, yeah, I'm sure that they didn't, but then immediately when that rumor you know came out my point is that's when I would have got a little bit more assertive about it and got with pennies and, and cook and involved you know because they're directly involved and and got after something and, and tried to to hold it off for a while until we could negotiate or talk that's that was my point Lisa final thought before moving on I'm fine next question from Deb Robinson of the ledger um, well, you talked a little bit about how politics can be um, unseemly at times. Um, how important is it to run a clean campaign, in your opinion, and have you done that to the best of your ability? Can't my turn. Um, how important that, that to me that's paramount. Um, it's important in two reasons. And number one, it's important because I want people to know who I am and what I'm going to bring to the table. And I'm not going to do that by tearing somebody else down. And uh, um, I, I strongly believe that our, our campaign has been above board and I am not going to get into innuendo gossip and thing. I, I want Canton to be good. I want it to be great. I want it to be better than it is now. And um, I'm not going to get into a dirty campaign. I haven't gone into it. I don't believe in it. And uh, I don't think it, it does any, any good for the community. And it doesn't go, do any good for the candidates. And uh, I deplore anybody that, that lowers themselves to that level. Uh, to me, that, uh, that's despicable. Um, I absolutely believe that it's been a clean campaign. I, uh, I, I've always um, felt that uh, one of my pet peeves was that to tear someone else down to make yourself look better because it only makes you look worse. So um, I think it's been a clean campaign. Um, I'm not on the inside of anything, so I really have uh, nothing to bring out. I don't um, think that there's anything anybody could bring out about me. So um, I think it's been clean and good, and I appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I think it's been clean in the most part. I think it should be clean, and I, and I appreciate that as well. Um, the only thing I ask, and I would like to portray, is that whether people believe in what I do, whether they like me, dislike me, or anything else, I'm always going to be of high ethical standards and be honest with things. That's why I ask of my um, other candidates, too. Just be out there, be honest about your position, where you're going, and uh, that's it. Open floor. No comments? We'll go on to the next question. John Froling, Democrat. Thank you. The future of the Opera House appears to be in question. Should the owner demolish it or should the city get involved? What would be your best solution? Lisa. It's mine, right? Um, I absolutely would love to see it restored. <laughs> um, I thought that that was the plan 
I don't know that the city, I would love to see the city get involved if uh, the city had the funds. I don't know that that's um, possible. That's another spot for maybe a grant, especially it being a historical building. I know it's been restored before, but um, boy, it's a, it's a beautiful building. Um, I believe that the uh, tenants have agreed to go, or at least some of them have agreed to go back in there should he uh, um, fix it back up. So that's my answer. Yeah, and I'm going to say this in fairness to both the other candidates is that I probably have more inside information on this than they do. So it's probably unfair to them, to be honest with you. But I can tell you, um, not financially right now, Lisa, and I agree with you. I'd certainly love to see that building restored. Um, I didn't grow up in Canton, but it's certainly an icon of Canton, and uh, it's a beautiful building on the square. We lose that building, we lose one third of that uh, block over there on the east side of the, of the square. But we have been in talks with um, the owner of the building, the city. We have been involved, not financially, and I don't think we would be able to financially, as Lisa says, uh, but we have been involved in talks with them. We've been involved with another developer in trying to help out with things. Um, but again, um, the final decision right now is going to be in the owner's hands, um, if we can, unless we can work out something um, viable between the two of us. But there's no definitive um, answer yet to that, but what it is being worked on, like I said, I do feel in all fairness that I probably would have more information than they do. And I don't mean that, I mean, it's probably unfair to them, the question. Well, uh, thanks, Kevin. I. I uh I appreciate that, Jeff. I mean, because like I said, you, you know, Lisa and I aren't on the inside, but I think we're all in agreement, you know. I have grown up in Canton, and I do. It's, it's going to be a big, giant hole there if they take it down. But, you know, the city should get involved. I don't know. We can't get involved financially uh, at this point. Um, uh, but the owner's going to have to make a decision. But, you know, that decision may be made for him, John, with uh, engineering. You know, they may say it's not fixable. And they're, if it's, that's what they say, I mean, that's... There's nothing we can do about it, but I, I recall that building, you know, being hit so hard by the tornado in '75, and to see it come back the way it was and, and rejuvenated, it was a beautiful building. Uh, and gosh darn it, it's taken a beating. I mean, it looks like Berlin, 1945 over there, you know. But most of her, she's still standing, you know. So they did a good job putting it up, and I hope we can keep it up. Open floor candidates. Move on to the next question. Then it will come from Deb Robinson of the Ledger. Describe what you believe defines a successful mayor. Is that my answer? Jeff? Yep. I think a successful mayor is one that um, is able to work in partnership with the community. And I'm talking about all the stakeholders of the community. That includes the businesses, the residents, the employees of the city, to work together to accomplish um, to accomplish good things for the city and to move the city forward. Um, whether it be economic development, bringing in, uh, cleaning up the city type of things, um, and recruiting. Um, businesses, jobs here. But I think the whole thing, the whole key is, and Lisa mentioned in the last, no, two questions ago, I believe, or maybe the last question, where she said she had that women are meet and greet, you know, ideas. It is that networking and partnering with other people and working together. I think that's what good mayor is. They have to reach out. They have to work together with everybody and listen to ideas. You know, you've got two ears, one mouth, sometimes listening twice as much is better communication. Um, okay, I guess I'm, time's up, so I'm listening. <laughs> I, a good mayor to me, uh, an effective mayor to me, is a person of the people. And you can't, uh, it, it, everything that you do as a mayor, an effective mayor, and a good mayor has to surround, has to be, uh, with your mind, is you have to make better living conditions for, and better services for families and for the people. Um, and. Uh, I think that I'll go back to Mayberry, man. I, you know, I like to Mayberry myself around here, you know. Walk into businesses and say hi, be seen on the street, walk into neighborhoods, uh, 
talking to people randomly, having meetings with uh, residents if they want to come and meet, but I'd like to go to them rather than have to come to me. Uh, to me, that's a good and effective mayor, one who is absolutely just does things for the families, for the people, and not worried about who's getting credit and not breaking their arm to beat themselves on the back over it. Um, I think it's uh, a mayor that can walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So um, to reiterate what Kent said, I mean, it is about the people. So whether it's the businesses and, and shopping there or meeting with them or listening to the people when they call, um, and in the end, when you're done being mayor, to have respect. Um, that's what we all strive for, is respect. And uh, I think that would be a successful mayorship for me if I was respected. Additional comments are welcome. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, and, and it's, you know, when I mentioned earlier about reaching out to all the people and uh, the stakeholders and the you know, working together with everybody, partnering with them and everything. The whole thing is that's part of being an effective leader. And you got to be a good leader to be a mayor because you've got to cultivate that trust with the people. Because if a leader doesn't have trust from the people, they will not have any followers. It doesn't matter how good their platform or agenda is, if they can't have followers. So you got to establish, cultivate that trust, establish it, and keep that trust. Uh, with people. It takes a long time to gain it and you can lose it in a few seconds. So I think that's big uh, with it. That's why I was trying to get it at the beginning when I said reaching out to work with a lot of different groups and getting that, uh, it's establishing that trust. And I, you know, I agree with that, but I also, again, you know, you want to be able, I like to go around and walk and talk to people and see what's going on and see what they want. You know, we talked about businesses coming in here. We need a diversity of businesses. You know, there's a lot of things people say, you know, I've heard it a hundred times, and I, I, myself included. I want a, I want a movie theater, man. You know, that's what I want to go after and get. Because a lot of people come and talk to me about that. I said, "Can you get a movie theater here?" I said, "I don't know. We'll give her, a, we'll give her, a, you'll call it try because I want one too." And, and you know, that is an example of diversifying. You know, some of the businesses. And I'm not putting down any businesses come into town or anything like that. You can't. Sometimes you can't pick and choose, but. You know, you can you can select areas to go to. I mean, look at our strengths right now. Our strengths is agriculture. Our strengths is uh, fishing and, and and hunting and and tourism. You got uh, Goose Ranch and uh, uh, you've got uh, well. Now we got this new bicycle trail coming in. I think Angie Lincolnfeller said it best. We don't even have a bicycle shop in town. You know, it's things like that. You need to go out and diversify the biz type of businesses you bring in. Because I don't want to, I don't want to go out and buy or go out and get you know, ten lawnmower companies to come in and, and you know, Lisa has a lawnmower company. You know, what do we need ten more? And, and you know, you just put more pressure on the people that have been here and established here. And sometimes that's happened. But um, that's why you go out and you listen to the people and you you build your uh, administration around people and families that to me is a good mayor an effective mayor and a mayor that uh, is doing their job properly Lisa before we move on to the next question and I think Jeff is right leadership is paramount to being a good mayor while you are mayor um, you do have to um, build trust uh, you have to have integrity and um, just be a leader and do as I do and not just as I say. And I think that I absolutely can do that. I've done that in the past 30 years and I can continue to do that for the city. John Froling of the Democrat. Next question, please. Okay. Officials typically deal with matters on the agenda and move on. It's understandable they don't want to waste time. However, to members of the public watching city council meetings at the historic depot or at home on Channel 22, the action can be hard to follow without the full details in the agenda packet. To convey an impression of transparency and to avoid confusion, what would you do to help the public understand what the city is doing, why it's doing what it does, and how the actions being taken are in the best interests of residents and taxpayers. Mine? Uh, John, I think we'd go back to, I, I want to go back to four meetings. 
um, so people understand what's going on in these when we debate and carry on and discuss these um, agenda items. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think all three of us were in agreement at the uh, uh, Wallace Park that you know we need to probably go back to the four meetings. But I definitely uh, I'm think that's um, I think that's important and. Uh, I think another thing that's really important is that I don't think we access and use the media enough. I mean, you know, just to go and sit with uh, uh, Mark or Leon or Don and, and have a radio show uh, once a week or uh, sit down with, uh, you know, the ledger and and, and uh, let, let them know what's going on and what we're thinking and, and things like that. I, I, again, that's just part of, to me, the transparency of going out and, and uh, uh, being seen and discuss these things with people and just just be out there and be in your offer be be accessible to the people uh, that's that's extremely important thank you I'm sorry I agree a hundred percent uh, four meetings it's it's a must I when I listen to council meetings I I feel lost I'm like I don't it, that consent agenda I, I don't like that um, town hall meetings I've said it all along I believe that it's an important important thing to do to um, get people's ideas but um, I had talked to Leon on the radio actually about that it, that we need to have the mayor speaking on the radio and talking to the people or talking to the media as well um, they need to know what's going on and it's it's the transparency that's been missing for the last four years Thank you. And again, I concur with both of them, like Kent said, and uh, we said it at Wallace Park to meet the candidates. We need to go back to the um, two council meetings and two committee meetings a month, which is what we've had before. Um, I know when we, um, a couple years ago after the election, when we had different council, or a few different council members came in, the idea surfaced about going to two meetings. The council approved that um, last year after we did the experiment. Um, when we started out again with the May, the new fiscal year, I tried to uh, go back to four meetings. I had the support of a couple councilmen, but not enough to vote it in. So, um, but I did try it. I did try to go back already. The other thing I think we need to do besides that, I think a newsletter would be nice. But again, that means more money or funds. But I'm thinking it might be something we can do by maybe bringing in an intern from the high school uh, or from uh, the community colleges for a journal, the journalism department, whatever else to help out with the newsletter type thing. But I think that might be beneficial in addition to what Lisa said about the mayor going on the radio and stuff. Yeah. Candidates, any more on that? Oh, question? I think we could utilize the internet a lot more. Uh, I think that hits the younger people because that's, <laughs> that's what they live for is the uh, internet and social media. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, my guess, I don't understand if uh, we're at two meetings, we cut the meetings down from two to four, why didn't we cut the pay? I mean, they're only working half the time. To me, that's logical. So that would be my uh, suggestion, and maybe the maybe the council would uh, have a change of heart if, uh, if you're saying they didn't want to go back. But it definitely, we need to go back to four, uh, to four meetings, because it's more informative. And I think you get more work done, and I think you get it done in a, in a proper manner, and not just rushing through things. Because I've heard some of the council people say, Oh, I didn't. I didn't quite understand that. Well, they, they're not going to if you don't have those important committee meetings. So, um, I, I think you know, just putting and making an effort to go out and, and get information out is is the big key. Lisa or Jeff, one last comment on this question. And I've heard from the um, several aldermen as well that they just don't feel like they have time to make good decisions and that they're rushed into it. So. Um, obviously, they're not the ones um, that voted for the going back to four meetings, but um, yeah, I think it's important to do. No, I just say in response to um, Ken's thing, and I agree with the social media and the um, web page. That would be the other thing too. If we did do a newsletter and the agencies, that do, I should say agencies, municipalities uh, do that. They also post the electronic version on the uh, website as well. So. We're coming up to almost one hour on the program. We're getting a lot of discussion. We'll do four more questions just to let the uh, media and the uh, viewing and radio audience know where we're at on this. So uh, the next question belongs to uh, Don Tharp of WBYS. We've touched a little bit on this, but let's just go back. Economic development is very important to help our community. Uh, Illinois has been losing large amounts of people to other states. 
When students leave Canton to go to college, they may never return. In your opinion, what can we do? What can be done to prevent that from happening and bring them back to Canton, or once they graduated? Lisa will begin. Um, that brings up an in interesting point. Um, I've really never said this in open forum before, but one of my uh, thoughts is, and this would have to do with union negotiation, so it would take a while, but one of my thoughts is the people that we employ for the city of Canton should live in the city of Canton. So, and this doesn't really involve them going off to college, but I think I've heard the argument, well, we can't, um, we can't go get good people for those jobs, and I wholly disagree. I think if we form partnerships with the high school and with Spoon River College for training programs or um, cadet programs or whatever, we train them up here. They may go to college, but we bring them back here to work. I've got um, two children that went off to college and came back here and are doing quite well. So I think we need to do what we can to offer them employment here you know um, at least you're gonna have to help me with this I can't take credit for any of this but I'm gonna tell you what is going on right now and um, the Chamber of Commerce uh, the uh, they have a program and uh, where they mentor um, teens and they they actually pair them up with different professionals in the community whether it be a doctor a lawyer an engineer whatever they may have an interest in Lisa, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know. I, the name of the program escapes me right now. It's a mentoring. I it's mean, a mentoring it's, program. Yeah, yeah but there, they, there's a name to it that, she, that they have. But it's an excellent program. And I, and like I said, I can't take any credit for that. But I think that if we can continue to promote that and we can continue to help the chamber out with that in any way we can, I think that would help bring um, people back here to uh, live and work here. I... Uh, <clears throat> I think we, you know, uh, again, I went back and talked about working closer with the school district and with the, the college. A lot of kids aren't going to college anymore because they can't afford it. It's getting uh, skyrocketing. You know, even the, even the, you know, I listened to the thing at Wallace Park here and I with the college um, candidates there, and they, and they were all saying, you know, that it's out of whack because the state's not paying their third, so they they have to raise their rates and everything else, but. You know, if we could get some good trade schools or, you know, uh, welding programs, or, and I know they have a diesel program stuff out there and really work hard with them. A lot of kids are going more into the trades now than they are uh, going on to college, and these two-year degrees from uh, uh, Spoon River are, are important. And it already sounds like this high school is, you know, working with uh, some of the local uh, professionals here to, to see if uh, teens are interested. And I see in the Peoria paper, this school district over there is doing the same thing. So this problem is not just unique to Canton, that even Peoria, Washington East Peoria and Macomb, they're all having the same problems as we are. Open floor candidates. Yeah, you know, and I think Ken, when Ken says that the they're having um, some of problems, that's one of the reasons why we've um, gone outside the city of Canton and we're working with other communities such as Macomb with our uh, meetings and things just to see how we can address that together, get uh, different perspectives on things, different ideas. So, uh, uh, but again, I think the, um, the big thing here is, you know, whether it's going into trades, as Ken suggests that they're doing, and uh, I think going into trades is great. There's nothing wrong with that for uh, kids going that route. Uh, they can't uh, go to college or other things. But I think the mentoring programs work across the board. They can find people in trades too as well that they can mentor with. So, Lisa and Kent, one more thought. Well, I think we go back to the specific economic development and bringing um, and or keeping kids here and families. I think we need to remember that we have, um, I mean, we obviously have Graham Hospital, huge employer here. Um, but the city's a pretty big employer, and I really feel like the people that we hire should be committed to our community and to be c truly committed um, that they should live in Canton. I, I think the economic development part, Don, is what you mean. We, you know, we've all beaten this this road quite a bit tonight. But again, you know, we have to find jobs for, to keep people here, and we have turned into a society of service oriented, and. I know, for example, it was suggested to me, and I never thought about it, but, you know, it would really be nice to have some sort of plant or program in, in, through Spoon River or someplace that uh, teaches uh, people how to manage uh, 
restaurants and bars and motels and things like that. We don't have that, you know, and if we had some, some sort of a program like that, uh, I think that would bring more students to the to the area and maybe keep some of them here. Uh, so economic development is extremely important and, and until we get done with the childish squabble in Springfield, we're still going to continue to lose businesses and lose population. I think this this city alone has lost since the last census over 3,000 people, and, and uh, it's going to continue to be a, a problem until we can, uh, you know, get that squabble ended down in Springfield and start doing what's right for the people. And again, you know, I think the mayor has. Uh, if Canton should be able to make a phone call or two on a daily basis if you have to and say, hey, let's get this thing going, you know, and, and continue to keep those people, keep the uh, heat to their feet, and fire to their feet, and, and uh, keep them focused on what's important. John Froling, Democrat. Next question. In the past, the city of Canton had a professional city administrator who was educated in local government management and budgeting. As a cost-saving measure, the city manager duties have more recently become the responsibility of the treasurer, the former community services director, Jason Strandberg, and, and now the city attorney. Do you think returning that position to a professional status would help control city finances or just be another expense we don't need and can't afford? Okay, uh, John, I'll answer it this way. Number one, um, when we had a full-time city administrator, he was not doing treasurer duties. There was a treasurer on board, okay? So it was a separate, separate function, and there was a comptroller doing um, things. So we did, he was not doing treasurer duties at all. Uh, he was a full-time city administrator. Um, we still have a, full, a treasurer. We still have a comptroller, but we've contracted it out to Clifton Larson Allen, as you well know, uh, a couple years ago. Um, and that has become more cost uh, beneficial for us right now, more cost efficient. Um, yes, you are correct that right now the city attorney is doing the interim, but it is at less cost if we had a full-time administrator. And the only reason being is that I went to a part-time administrator when I became mayor and after the first part time left, it was too, you're not going to get a new one in with the election coming up right now uh, and committing to it, um, not knowing what the future is going to be because each mayor is going to bring in their own person or could bring in their own person. So it would be revisited after the election, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I said, and I've, I'll say it again, I've said it before um, if you have a mayor that's here full time and is working with, um, your department heads, your council, and um, treasurer, comptroller, city clerk. I'm not sure that you need that full-time person to be a city administrator. I think you know that's part of your job to be a city administrator, and it should be part of everybody else's job. And I think the city council, you know, uh, the mayor uh, should step up and uh, tell them that they need to step up too and take. Uh, Take part more more of an active role in city government. You know, um, I I don't know where you're gonna pay for it, John. That's the other problem. You know, I don't know how we're gonna pay that much money for for somebody. If we do need, you know, I think what we do need more than a city administrator is a comptroller. The comptroller is here all the time, like uh, Katie Campbell was. You know, and I I don't know. Uh, to me, that's more important right now than city administrator. I think you know everybody pull that together. Uh, everybody pulls their own. Wait, and I think uh, you can administer the city on uh, at a different level. Um, I pretty much will echo what Kent said. I I absolutely think it's an expense that the city can't afford. Um, mayors before um, Don Edwards was a mayor for 20 years and didn't have a city administrator, <laughs> so I agree that the mayor should be there, should be present, should be working with the department heads. Uh, department heads should be running their departments, and uh, I, I absolutely believe that it is not something that the city can afford. Open discussion, Jeff. Yeah, Kevin, as um, they both said, and I did, is that uh, there was a full-time city administrator when I took over office as mayor, and I did eliminate that position and went to part-time because I felt that the other part of that was me having to do it. But again, it was a part-time mayor position, and there's, you know, now I do have a lot more time to put into it, but there's still some expertise that comes from a part-time administrator 
or sometimes administratively be full-time or part-time. And I agree with both Kent and Lisa, we can't afford a full-time administrator. But part-time, I think you at least need somebody on that level um, because anybody can come in and become mayor. But what do you know, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this towards, it's not directed towards Kent or Lisa, I'm saying in general. It may, what does that person maybe know about TIF or know about uh, bond revenues or these types of things? And I don't know. I'm just saying you could get a mayor like that ten years from now who don't, you know. So sometimes you need that professional. But at, at what expense? At what level? Um, when Kent mentions bringing back uh, a full-time controller inside, we did have an excellent one before, uh, and I will agree with him there. However, what I have found, which works out nice, has worked out really well with our audit, and you know we've gotten some real good reviews lately from Moody's, S&P Global, our auditor, is that having an internal treasurer and having an outside contracted agency doing our controller duties really gives us a good checks and balance. I don't, you know, I don't know, you said the cost effective having this outside agency come in. I don't know, I'm, again, I'm on the outside. What, what does it cost? I mean, did, 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 are we paying them less than what we paid Katie? You when know, you, that's, that's the question. When I you have take into consideration um, salary and benefits, yes. Okay. Um, and they're here full time? No. See, that's my point. That's, not. that's not cost effective because they're not here full time. Uh, she was here full time. And to me, that was a very important. You've got to hire somebody that's professional, which she was. And I'm not sitting there beating Katie's drum, but she did a great job. And she was, her, she was impeccable uh, when it came to her work and to her honesty. So that checks and balance thing, I think, uh, was already in there when, when Katie was there. And the other thing, you know, you, you said that you did away with uh, the uh, city administrator, but you didn't. I said the you full went, time. No. I know you said you did away with it and you didn't you went to a from a full-time to a part-time right and so, and again I'm gonna go back and say this again the mayor has if the mayor is here full-time you don't need a part-time um, so you need a mayor needs to be here full-time with a full-time department heads with a full-time uh, treasurer and uh, uh, city clerk and uh, you know administrative people like that and uh, then you need to be able to, to uh, stick with your uh, stick with the council and get them all involved. It's got to be, you know, all for one type of deal. Lisa, a final comment before we go to and the I next think, question. And I think we have a full-time city attorney now. When we didn't for years either. I mean, it was always a part-time job. So I would think that um, with the city attorney and the mayor, I I think that should be sufficient. Next I question. Can just about one thing, real quick. We did have a full time city attorney prior to uh, four years ago. Well, right, prior to four years ago, but we had Chrissy Peterson. But right. so uh, before that, just, uh, what I'm talking okay. about is years ago. Oh, I mean, I for you years. About prior to my, no, oh, I'm sorry. No, for oh, years we didn't. No yeah. Thank you. yeah. In complete fairness, Kent, you have one final, very short comment before we move on. No, I can't think of <laughs> That being the case, Don Tharp of WBYS. Next question. I do have a question. Oh, no, it Who's, who's up now? Because I've lost track. I, me too. Okay. Oh, I'm up? Okay. I am? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Don. No problem. Uh, in your opinions, what can be done to bring more tourism visitors to Canada? We've got Emiquan Sippy. We've got this, this, uh, these people went out here to Goose Ranch and done a fantastic job. You got to sell it. Like anything else, you got to sell it. We've got goose hunting, duck hunting, the parks, Lakeland Park's fabulous. You know, now we're going to have this bicycle trail that the park district's putting up and putting together. And, and uh, so, you know, you got to sell it, Don. It's like everything else. You know, you got to be aggressive and be assertive and, and, uh, you got to be out there with a banner out front, you know, and saying, come and look at me, look at me, and uh, get people in here to experience that. Uh, I tell you, you know, people come from the Chicago area and uh, the bigger cities, and they come here, they don't come here to drive around on four-lane interstates because they live on those. They come down here because they like to see a cow on the road, or, you know, they like that that rural setting that we have here you know we like i said we we get aggressive and get assertive we can sell ourselves and uh, that's that's what we got to do man we got to go out and say we got a lot to offer come and enjoy i agree we have to sell ourselves um we actually camp at goose ranch and there are a lot of people from iowa and like he said chicago and there's a lot of people from out of the area already there um they've got a tv show so, I mean, we should be on the bandwagon with that and advertising ourselves. Um, 
we do have so much to offer. Canton Lake, I mean, I grew up out there. It's an awesome, awesome recreational area. So um, I think it's all about selling ourselves and uh, advertising if we need to. Yeah, I, I agree with both of them. Uh, Kent, you know, I came from up in the Chicagoland area, and yeah, from the four-lane roads and everything, and I came down here, and I like this a lot better, and I haven't looked back. And it's not, you know, and I'm going to tell you, I don't think people from outside the area, way outside, like really know what Canton is or what Canton has to offer. And we have great things to offer here. And we do need to market it, we need to advertise it. And I think we need to capitalize on the lake, as Lisa mentions. The lake, the campground, that's an untapped resource there. And uh, that's something we really got to work on. I think no matter who gets elected next term, that's got to be a priority. Candidates, more discussion on that? Yeah, I think the lake, you know, is something that we need to um, really push also. Um, but we need to put some money into it a little bit if we can. And uh, it, needs, it needs some work out there. I mean, there's been some stuff done. but. You know, the, the campgrounds are getting antiquated now, and uh, there's some things there, and I think we even talked about that, or not we, but I think it was even talked about in the budget meeting, you know, uh, recently. But again, I, that's why it's important to have a good relationship with the county board, because uh, the county's in this too, you know, uh, like Amaquan City, Goose Ranch, it's outside the city, but man, those people do a fabulous job out there. It, it's just fantastic out there, and we've got some nice hunting grounds with the, uh, Fulton County's got a, a beautiful, uh, camping facility out there too uh, mm -hmm. so man we're here you know we just got to bang the drum and uh, make some noise and have people look at us I agree I <laughs> don't know what more we can say about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah same thing I, I mean, yeah. and our final question of the night will come from Deb Robinson of the ledger with less than a week before election day, is there anything you would change about how you've campaigned or are you satisfied? Um, I think I'm satisfied. Um, being the novice here, I, you know, don't have anything to compare to, but um, I'm satisfied. I, I feel like I've um, got my word out there. I think people know what I stand for. Um, I've got a really good response, and it, this has been truly a grassroots effort. We haven't gone off after big money. We haven't spent a lot of money, but I think we've really got our word out. So I'm I'm happy with what I've done. I'm never satisfied till the end. I don't know when yet. Well, the end will be Tuesday, but I'm always striving for uh, the best. I always strive for the highest quality and continuous improvement. What I mean that is that my campaign, from the day it starts until the day it ends, I've got to continually work towards it to better it and keep going with it. I think I've done a good job up to this point, but I don't want to say I'm satisfied because I say it's satisfied, it means I'm done, I'm, I'm ended today. I'm going to be continuing to pursue things all the way through Tuesday, just like I do in my, as a leader, as a mayor of the city of Canton. I don't want to just say I'm satisfied with things. I'm satisfied with things will always be better. You can always improve upon things. And I always strive highest quality. And I do it with passion and pride. I'm, uh, I've worked hard. And um, I'm going to continue to work hard. And I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm dissatisfied, but I'm not going to stop. You know, I, I, uh, I'm going to leave my guts on the football field. Uh, but when I, when I hit the, Hit Tuesday morning. It's going to be my tank's going to be empty because I'm going to give it everything I've, I've got and everything I've had, and I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm going to continue to push. I've been going door to door. I've been talking to everybody I can think of to talk to, listen to me. I've, you know, like I said, I've talked to the people in the high rise and let them know that I'm going to be here for them and their citizens. And I try to bring as many people in as I can to to the campaign and let them know that their their thoughts and their their uh, ideas are more than welcome. I'm very very pleased and humbled by the support I've gotten um, in the community. I just, it's just been heartwarming, and I know it's been, it's been a lot to Kathy and I. Um, I'm, I'm satisfied with that, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with that. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and humbled by that more than anything else. But yeah, I want to continue to fight and keep working. You know, it's not over till uh, uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. With this being the final question, candidates, one very brief comment from each of you. And Lisa, you had the first comment on this question, so we'll go to you first. Well, I mean, of course, I'm going to keep working till the very end. I mean, that's that's goes without saying. But uh, 
I appreciate every, everyone that has listened to me, that has answered their door, the people that have worked for me endlessly and um, helped me plan things that I had no idea how to do. And I very much appreciate everyone to go vote on April 4th. Um, I'm asking, of course, for your vote. But I hope everybody has enjoyed the program, and I appreciate uh, you guys having us here. Thank you. Jeff? Yeah, I, I'd just like to say that um, public service is a public trust. And I cultivate that trust through some of my um, values and some I've already talked about earlier, some of my core values. I'm not going to go through my whole list. But, you know, I am one, I come with experience. I'm the only experienced candidate in Canton City Government having six years. I am the incumbent and served as your mayor for the last four years. And prior to that, two years, I was all in Ward 2 on council. I'm not coming into this blindly or coldly. I've stepped into it, working my way up from alderman to a mayor, not just trying to go right to the top. Uh, secondly, with that, um, or the second thing I'd like to say is that my integrity and honesty are a foundation of my leadership. I have unquestionable character and credibility, and I think I've cultivated that trust, and Again, I ask for your continued trust in me and support by voting for me on April 4th to a uh, second term. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the media and, and uh, Mark and everybody for being here and having this opportunity. And, uh, you know, I, again, you know, I think we've all continued to say, you know, what we believe in, what we're going to do, and this and that. And it, it, the bottom line is, um, Nobody's going to outwork me, and I, I, there's not going to be any doubt in anybody's mind who the mayor is in Canton, and not going to say who who's the mayor. Or, um, but I'm going to be there full time. I'm going to be working with the people for the people. Um, I'm going to push myself. I'm going to strive to better myself. I'm going to strive to better the city. I'm going to push the city in in the the. Uh, service people, city service people, the department heads, the council to strive, for, push them to be better than they are, to, to see that they are, their, limit, their um, talents are unlimited and uh, give them the tools and, and uh, give them the leadership that they want and the desire and they, they deserve. And uh, so does the citizen of Canton. Uh, there's uh, no doubt that uh, nobody will outwork me. I'll hit the ground running. Uh, I'm gonna work very hard. I'm very passionate about this city, you know, I grew up here and um, I want my family to stay here and uh, uh, those are the things I bring to the table. And I want to say also that, you know, I, I would hope that people go out and vote. Uh, I, I said it at, at uh, Meet Your Candidates, I'm going to say it now. <clears throat> it's important to vote, to, you know, if you want to complain, you can vote. If you don't vote, you don't have a right to complain in my book. I got a, a son that's a war veteran, a decorated war veteran, and, and he gave his, uh, he gave everything he had for the United States. There's a lot of people gave gave their entire life for the United States and for the privilege and the honor to vote. And uh, to me, that's imperative and that's paramount. And obviously, I'd like I'd like to have your vote, but if anything, please go out and vote and exercise your God-given right that uh, these men and women have uh, given their all for. Thanks again for this evening. That's going to wrap up the Canton Mayoral Candidates Forum. We thank the candidates for being a part of this event, Jeff Fritz, Kent McDowell, and Lisa Farenbrook. Likewise, to WBYS and Channel 22 viewers for tuning in, and to the Democrat and Daily Ledger for their participation. It's hoped the discussion you've just heard has been worthwhile and will help you make an informed decision when you go to the polls on April 4th. On behalf of M. Bixler Video Productions, Graham Hospital, and the Canton Area Chamber of Commerce Government Affairs Committee, I'm Kevin Stevenson. So long from Graham Hospital. Helping bring you this event, Sedgwick Funeral Homes, Bartonville, Farmington, and Canton, Remax Traders Unlimited, Susie McMillan, your agent, by Spoon River Animal Clinic, located on the north edge of Canton, Stereo Village on South 4th Avenue in Canton by Canton Wesley United Methodist Church located on North Avenue A and by M. Bixler Video Productions. Call us for more information about underwriting.
Helping bring you this event, Monocle's Pizza on North 5th Avenue in Canton. In Canton, we deliver the Bank of Farmington, located in Farmington and in Canton, by Canton Napa, located on North 1st Avenue in Canton. Big Horse Vineyard, located east of Lewistown. Canton Lambs of God Daycare and Preschool, located on North Avenue A in Canton. And by M. Bixler Video Productions, want a DVD? Call us for more information.